John Cream Moore, ironically, was a West Point graduate from Tennessee who an early assignment to Galveston turns into a Texas Brigadier General. <laughs> John Creed Moore's story begins on February the 28th, 1824, at Redbridge in Hawkins County, Tennessee. The fifth of eight children of Cleon Moore, who was the new postmaster of Redbridge, and Margaret Creed Moore. John attended Emory and Henry College, a Methodist liberal arts college in Virginia, before being admitted to the United States Military Academy at West Point in 1845. Moore graduated in 1849, 17th in a class of 43. Some of the other notable graduates from the class of 1849 include the Medal of Honor winner, Union Brigadier General Absalon Baird, who fought at Chickamauga, Atlanta, and with Sherman on his march to the sea. Confederate Brigadier General Seth Barton, who fought at Chickasaw Bluff and was captured at Vicksburg. And Confederate Brigadier General Alfred Cumming, who fought in the Seven Days Campaign and was also captured at Vicksburg. Moore was commissioned a brevet second lieutenant in the 4th U.S. Artillery and went to Florida where he fought in the Seminole Wars. After spending time in New Mexico and Nebraska, Moore resigned his commission on his birthday, February the 28, 1855. After pursuing a civil engineer career in Tennessee for five years, Moore became a professor at Shelby College in Shelbyville, Kentucky. The beginning of the war was teaching at Shelby College in Kentucky. He joined the regular Confederate Army and was posted to several places, such as Mobile, and then Galveston to help build defenses. But like so many, he didn't want to build defenses. He wanted to be a combat officer. He'd never gotten his chance. He never went to Mexico. He served only briefly against the Seminole Indians. He spent his Army career before he became a school teacher in New Mexico and Nebraska. So this was his big chance to show what he could do. He helped raise the second Texas in Galveston. And when the Confederates begged for reinforcements prior to the Battle of Shiloh, they were sent to North Mississippi. They will then of course make the attack in April of 1862, where Moore will be commended for his efforts. And in fact, will be promoted from Colonel to Brigadier General the very next month and put in command of his own brigade of troops, which will include the second Texas. They'll stay with him. Horrifically, their next big battle is down at Corinth, Mississippi in October, 1862, where in two days of fighting, Moore lost 68% of his men in his brigade. Now, most of those are captured and they'll be exchanged back, but an awful lot of them were killed or wounded in horrific charges on Union defenses is a very famous picture of his successor as Colonel of the Second Texas lying dead with many of his men in front of Battery Robinette. The picture has become a staple in Civil War textbooks. Next stop was Vicksburg, and we all know how that turns out for them. They were surrendered along with their commander, Moore, when Vicksburg fell on the 4th of July, 1863. Most of them were exchanged again. Again, the second Texas is with him. Moore is exchanged and sent to serve in the armies or troops with Braxton Bragg, who were settled in along Missionary Ridge outside of Chattanooga in the wake of the Battle of Chickamauga. Once again, Moore is a brigade commander and the second Texas is with him. Missionary Ridge is again one of those names that Confederates prefer not to think too much about. What appeared to be a very strong position 
was overrun by Ulysses S. Grant's Union troops in November of 1863. The Confederates were hurled back off of Missionary Ridge and into northern Georgia. There, Moore became embroiled in the disputes over whether Bragg should be removed. On February the 3rd, 1864, just two months after the Battle of Missionary Ridge, Moore resigned his commission as Brigadier General in the Provisional Army of the Confederate States and reverted back to his regular army rank of Lieutenant Colonel. For years, historians have wondered why. Until now. It's odd because you'll look in books and you'll look online and they'll say, we don't know why that clash would have led Moore to give up a Brigadier General's commission. That makes no sense to us. Well, if you understand the two men's relationship, it makes a little bit more sense. When Bragg recommended Moore for a Brigadier General star, Hardy wrote a report saying, no, the second Texas broke and ran could not be rallied at Shiloh, and that Moore was operating so poorly as the temporary commander of a demi-brigade of three regiments that Hardy personally had to take command of it and lead it forward. Now, Moore wrote his own explanation, and it must have worked well there because Bragg will get his way and he'd become a brigadier general. But Hardy felt so strongly about this that a year later he submitted yet another report repeating these stories about the Texans breaking and running and Moore being an incompetent commander. That's what's doing when Moore gets exchanged and lo and behold is assigned to Hardy's corps as a brigade commander. This is probably not a good idea because this is the man who tried to keep him from getting his star. This is the man who criticized his Texans very harshly. So when Hardy's dispositions lead to total Confederate defeat on Missionary Ridge and Moore's brigade, along with many others, is routed, even though they made an initially very strong stand, they're simply overwhelmed. That's when the dispute becomes very heated. Jefferson Davis personally comes to North Georgia to try and settle things down between the Bragg and anti-Bragg factions. Um, it leads to no changes. It infuriates people like Ben Cheatham and William Hardy. And in the midst of that chaos, already having this previous dispute with Hardy, Moore submits his resignation. He does not want to serve anymore under William J. Hardy. He did ask for a transfer. Jefferson Davis declined that transfer. So he was going to be stuck the rest of the war working under a man whom had first tried to take away from him his one moment of glory, and then it led him to absolute total defeat on Missionary Ridge. Ironically, one of the reasons he'll be transferred or move away from Savannah is after he settles at Savannah as commander of the armory, Hardy is made district commander. And so he makes one more move to Selma, and I guess you can't hardly blame him at that point in time. Moore was in command of the Selma Ordnance and Naval Foundry when on April 2, 1865, Union General James H. Wilson led a cavalry raid and captured the city of Selma and completely destroyed all of the city's manufacturing facilities and equipment, including the arsenal, the Ordnance Center, the gunpowder works, and 11 ironworks and foundries. Just a week later, Robert E. Lee would surrender the Army of Northern Virginia at Appomattox. After the war, Moore returned to Texas and teaching. He taught mathematics for a while at the Coronal Institute in San Marcos before becoming the superintendent of schools, first in Mahaya and then in East Dallas. He later taught at Galveston, Kerrville, Osage, and Coriel City before his death on December the 31st, 1910. John Creed Moore is buried in the Osage Cemetery in Osage, Texas. <laughs>